Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And in today's video, I brought another solution from Pathfinder. Uh, this was one of the questions asked by one of my students. And this is Pathfinder uh, Thermal Physics. Check your understanding. Question number seventeen. It's a very interesting problem. So let me read out the problem for you formally. So here's the question: Two fixed vertical cylindrical vessels are connected at their bottoms by a thin tube. So this is one vessel, and this is another vessel. and they are connected by a thin tube like this okay one mole of gaseous nitrogen is confined in the vessels under the pistons a and b that can slide in the vessels without friction so together this is one mole of nitrogen okay and uh, the pistons can slide freely but there are stops at the top okay so because of the stops the pistons cannot move any further than h max okay so both vessels have protrusions near their top on the inner surface to stop further upward motion of the pistons allowing a maximum height h max is equal to 1.0 meter of the columns of the nitrogen gas in each of the vessels as shown in the figure okay outside the vessels is air at atmospheric pressure p not is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascals so outside there is atmospheric pressure and 10 to the power 5 pascals is standard atmospheric pressure in an experimental study pressure of the gas is measured over a wide range of temperatures and a pressure versus temperature graph is prepared so i have drawn a pt graph and this is what a pt graph looks like okay a portion of the graph is shown in the adjacent figure calculate the masses and areas of the piston so this is the portion of graph not the entire graph and we have to calculate the masses and areas of the pistons So, if you want, you can try out this problem, and uh, then you can have a look at my solution. I'll get into the analysis right away. All right. So, I hope all of you understood the question, and now let's look at the analysis. Now, look at this graph very carefully. You see that initial process is isobaric, and what does an isobaric process suggest? Isobaric process suggests that the uh, uh, the net pressure of the gas must be equal to the weight of the piston plus the atmospheric pressure, right? so that means at least one of the pistons is moving here right uh, or rather exactly one of the pistons is moving or otherwise both pistons must have same weight per unit area but otherwise what's possible is that at least one of the pistons is moving uh, freely um, and the pressure of the gas then must be the weight of that piston which is moving and plus the atmospheric pressure right and then there is another isobaric process over here okay so this also means that some piston must be moving and uh, its weight must be acting on the gas along with atmospheric pressure so here one of the pistons is moving here another uh, piston is moving and then uh, this uh, you can guess that these two must be the isobaric processes so what's happening really is see one of the pistons must have been here and the other piston might have been at the uh, bottom so it could i'm not claiming uh, that it is the left piston or the right piston but what how this graph is possible one of the ways is that one of the pistons was touching the bottom of one of the uh, vessels and the other piston was rising okay and therefore uh, when one of the pistons is rising then we have an isobaric uh, process and what happens when one of the pistons goes all the way to the top then uh, and you supply heat further so then what happens then uh, uh, th this volume is available but the Uh, pressure is not sufficient to start raising the other piston so what will happen in that case the isobaric process will start so even though it's not explicitly mentioned but this is this looks like an, this should be by logic it should be an isobaric process and when the temperature is increasing then at some point of time pressure is increasing and uh, due to the increase in pressure this pressure will at some point of time be sufficient to start raising the other piston so other piston will also start moving upward and until the upward uh, up, until the other piston touches the stops we know that this process must be isobaric why because the pressure of the gas is the atmospheric pressure plus weight of the piston per unit area okay so that's this process and once the other piston also touches all the way to the top then it must be again isobaric process again uh, this illustration the, the the things that i was circling is just only indicative i do not know a priori uh, which piston will move up first and which will move later on but uh, we have some rough idea of the process how it's going to proceed and then uh, we can do some calculations to find out which piston is which so just uh, let me also read out whatever i explained formally so by looking at the graph we can see that initially there is an isobaric process at 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascals p 
pa and then there is an isochoric process this one and followed by another isobaric process and then another isochoric process this can be interpreted as follows initially the weight of this weight of the initially the piston with smaller weight per unit area begins to rise and its weight per unit area must be equal to 1 into 10 to the power of 5 pascal why because this is pressure is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and atmospheric pressure is 1 into 10 to the power of 5 therefore weight of this uh, piston the lighter i mean the smaller uh, the piston with smaller weight per unit area must be 1 into 10 to the power of 5 pascal okay since the pressure of the first isobaric process is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and atmospheric pressure is also 1 into 10 to the power of 5 pascal okay now this piston touches the stops and pressure begins to rise isochorically until the pressure is sufficient to push the piston with greater weight per unit area okay same thing that i said earlier okay now the piston with greater weight per unit area begins to rise and this must be equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 pascal why because this is 2 into 10 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 and one atmosphere is the atmospheric pressure also you subtract one atmosphere from 2.5 so that must be the weight of piston per unit area so that must be 1.5 into 10 to the 5 pascal since the second isobaric pro process proceeds at 2.5 into 10 to the 5 pascal and atmospheric pressure is 1 into 10 to the 5 pascals okay now uh, let's apply ideal gas equation when the piston with smaller weight per unit area touches the stop so i do not know whether this one has this one touches first or the other one touches first but uh, i know for sure that the piston with smaller weight per unit area is going to touch it first so now I can use PV is equal to NRT. Let us say uh, H max is the maximum height which is given symbol and let us say the area of, of that cylinder is A1. So I deliberately am avoiding use of AA and AB because I do not know which one is this. So A1 into H max that is the volume and pressure is 2 into 10 to the power 5 pascal. So PV is equal to number of moles is 1 and this is the gas constant and temperature is 240 Kelvin over here. Okay. So PV is equal to NRT and that gives you A1 is equal to 0 0.01 meter square. Okay. So I have now the area of the piston with smaller mass per unit area. I still do have not identified which one, uh, which one of them it is. Okay. Now I can also find out its uh, uh, mass. So you know that uh, here the pressure is 2 into 10 to the 5. So m1g upon a1 so m1 is the mass of the piston with smaller mass per unit area so m1g upon a1 plus p0 is 2 into 10 to the power 5 and if you solve this you get m1 is equal to 100 kg okay so the piston with smaller mass per unit area has got a mass of 100 kg and area of 0 0.01 meter square right similarly for piston with greater weight per unit area ideal gas equation again we can apply so now here the pressure is what pressure is 2.5 uh, into 10 to the power 5 so pressure is p 2.5 into 10 to the 5 and now uh, since when the other piston is also touching the top now both vessel volumes are available for the gas therefore uh, for the volume i should write a1 plus a2 into h max okay so total so uh, i uh, uh, i mean after calculation i have put a1 a2 m1 and m2 but don't worry about how i uh, got this i'll just look at the calculations so if you use this this equation can be written directly and if you use this and i have already found a1 so i can solve this for a2 and a2 comes out to be 0 0.005 meter square right so a1 was how much a1 was 0 0.01 meter square and a2 is 0 0.005 meter square and that's how i got to know that this is this is smaller cross section so this must be a2 because 0 0.005 is smaller than 0 0.01 okay so therefore this must be a2 and the corresponding mass have marked as m2 and then this must be a1 and this must be m1 that's how i wrote these symbols okay so now uh, by force balance for uh, this m2 so m2g by a2 plus uh, one atmosphere that is 1 into 10 to the 5 that should be equal to 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 right and if you solve this equation you substitute the value of a2 and g and m2 comes out to be 75 kg so this piston has got 75 kg mass and this area is uh, 0 0.005 meter square right so this has got even though this weight is less but the area is still less so this is the piston with greater mass per unit area and this so piston a is going to rise uh, after piston b so first the piston b is going to rise and then it is going to touch the stop and then piston a will rise and then it is going to touch the top okay so now i have the entire uh, result so i can just summarize everything so ma is same as what i called as m2 ma is m2 is equal to 75 kg 
a a is uh, i calculated here uh, 0 0.005 uh, meter square and uh, similarly m b i calculated as 100 kg and a1 is 0 0.01 meter square so that's my final answer and this is my solution to uh, pathfinder uh, thermal physics check your understanding problem uh, 17 i hope you liked my solution and if you did like my solution please do give a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible through whatsapp groups telegram groups or uh, discord servers or whatever media you might be using for collaborating with your fellow students and uh, most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel uh, because that's what keeps me motivated to post newer videos every day and thanks a lot for watching this video please do keep coming back to my channel for more awesome stuff and uh, i'll see you in the next video and uh, as always god bless you all